I want to talk about uh, trading options uh, for high returns with low risk. And um, we're, we're going to look at the trading option spreads versus uh, directional trades. And we, whenever we have a profit in a directional trade, whether it's a stock or an option, we always protect that profit by uh, using options so that we uh, can protect the profit. In some cases, we can actually guarantee a profit for the trade, and I'll show you some examples of that. So whenever we have a profit in an option, uh, we always protect it by creating a uh, spread trade. And let's look at the risks of trading options. Uh, in general, when you buy a call option, um, the underlying stock must increase in price above the strike price of the option at expiration, or you'll incur 100% loss of the option premium. So let's look at an example. This is a um, uh, option chain for Facebook. Uh, Facebook stock was trading at 132.07 at the time. So let's say we were going to buy the 135 strike call. We can say see that that was trading at um, 310 bid, 315 ask. So um, if we if we went ahead and bought that option, uh, Facebook stock would have to close above 135 or you would incur a total loss of the $315 premium. So that you're always facing a 100% loss whenever you buy an option. So we always keep that in the back of our minds and we're always looking to um, create a spread trade whenever we have uh, a profit in a, in a call option trade. This is a uh, snapshot daily price movement of the VIX, the volatility index or the fear index and over the last couple of years, the market's been fairly choppy. Um, back in 2012, 2013, and 2014, the market trended pretty well, and it was a lot easier to make money uh, with options. But uh, the last couple of years, uh, it's been uh, choppy. Um, there hasn't been a straight uh, trend up the last couple of years. And, each one of these uh, spikes in the uh, VIX index, of course, represents a sell-off in the uh, stock market. So if you had bought a call option and you had bad timing um, during any one of these sell-offs that you see here, then you could have been uh, stopped out of your trade. So we're going to show you how we uh, reduce that risk of entering an option trade and with the goal of preventing uh, yourself from being stopped out of the trade. And uh, unlike directional trades, option spreads can profit if the underlying stock increases, decreases, or is flat. So if you, uh, in a directional trade, of course, the underlying stock has to go up um, and it, you, it has to close above that strike price at option expiration or you're going to lose 100% of your premium. But Option spreads can profit if the uh, underlying stock is up, down, or flat. And we're going to look at a little known option spread strategy that we use that can uh, literally eliminate the risk of, of your trade and guarantee a profit. And I'll show you um, actual examples of that. So let's talk about our uh, directional trades first and how we um, select trades. And we use what we call prime trade select to select an option directional trade. And there's three steps in prime trade select. And there's a Metastock module available for uh, prime trade select that will uh, comb a database and then come up with uh, trades that qualify under prime trade select. And once we enter a directional trade, then we have uh, three simple rules to manage that directional trade. Um, we always exit losing trades quickly before they turn into large losses. Um, we don't exit a winning trade with a small gain, and then we use options to protect profits. If we get a, a profit in the trade, then we'll use options to protect those profits. So um, we, once we enter a directional trade, 
will exit quickly, and I'll show you some examples of that, will exit quickly before it turns into a large loss, and we won't exit um, a winning trade with a small gain, and I'll show you how you can do that, and at the same time, uh, protect your existing profit. And we're going to show um, brokerage account statements uh, that show 1.9 million in actual closed trade profits using Prime Trade Select and the um, option spread strategies we'll talk about today. And we also have a snapshot um, of open trades, and that shows 1.2 million in open trade profits using Prime Trade Select. So. Uh, as a, as a, a little bit about our background at optioneering, uh, we have over 60 years of combined trading experience. Uh, we started um, teaching option strategies to other traders 21 years ago. Uh, prior to that, I just traded on my own, and about 21 years ago, uh, I started teaching my um, option strategies. Uh, I started out trading options with a $4,600 uh, trading account, and then in my first two years, I had over uh, $460,000 in profits, uh, which is more than I made the previous six years as an airline pilot. So these are just my uh, tax returns, those first two years that I was trading options, and uh, these, these show those first two years I had um, $460,000 in profits. And the optioneering team, we've received a total of 13 of the World Trading Championship trophies, uh, including eight first place, four second place, and one uh, third place trophy. And I won the um, World Trading Contest eight times, uh, which is more than any other uh, trader. And that's a real money contest, and the results are audited before they're posted on the sponsor's website. So uh, these are real-time returns. Um, I took first place uh, with a 309% real-time return uh, recently, and the year before that I had a second place with 339% uh, real-time return. So we're just showing these, these profit results so you can see that uh, the strategies um, really do work. Okay, let's talk about Prime Trade Select. And Step one in Prime Trade Select, and uh, we're talking about now when we select our, our process for selecting directional trades, and um, we the first step is to determine the price trend of a stock using the 50 and 100 day exponential moving average system, and then step two is we select a low risk entry point using the Keltner channels, and I'll show you some examples of that, and step three is we use what we call um, the 1% rule to select the option strike price uh, with a high probability of success. So these three trade management rules, of course, um, or these, the 1% uh, rule is uh, just as important as selecting the uh, option itself because you'll, you have thousands of uh, strike prices to choose from in a lot of those liquid stocks. So the 1% uh, rule uh, is just as important as the actual trade selection because uh, it allows you to uh, select a strike, a strike price with a high probability of success. And we'll show you some examples of that. So for step one, we determine the price trend. We use an EMA trend following system to determine the price trend. And the goal of the EMA system is to quantitatively measure the buying and selling pressure of a stock and it allows us to follow the trend instead of trying to predict the trend. And we like to use trend following, um, it, a trend following system instead of making uh, emotional decisions. And we've been using uh, trend following successfully for more than uh, 30 years. Uh, the trend following worked well in the 2002 and 2008 bear markets when we had short positions. So, in my personal accounts and in my advisory services we were heavily short uh, during the last two uh, bear markets and we, we were able to do well. So it's a very simple uh, trend following system if the 50-day exponential moving average is above the 100-day then that uh, stock is on a buy signal 
and if the 50-day exponential moving average is below the 100-day EMA, then that stock is on a um, sell signal. And if a stock is on a, a, a buy signal, we'll purchase the stock or a call option. And if the stock is on a sell signal, we'll purchase um, ETFs or put options on the uh, stock. And as I mentioned, the uh, trend following works bo in both bull and bear markets. Uh, right now we have uh, bullish positions, um, but we're always looking for a trend change and you know, to switch into bearish positions uh, if we start to enter uh, a bear market. So let's look at an example of a buy signal with the um, EMA system, and this is a daily price chart for Cigna, the insurance company, and these red and green vertical lines, this is the daily price movement of Cigna stock, and the blue line right here is the 50-day exponential moving average and the red line is the 100 day exponential moving average so we can see <clears throat> see right back here the blue line uh, actually crossed above the red line so at that point Cigna stock was on a buy signal and as long as the uh, blue line stays above the one the, the red line which is the 100 day then that stock remains on a buy signal Here's an example of a sell signal. This is for the uh, China ETF. And uh, we can see right, this is the daily uh, price movement of the ETF right here. And the blue line, uh, again, is the 50-day EMA. We can see right here it crossed below the red line, the 100-day EMA. So at that point, um, the China ETF was on a sell signal. And again, as long as that blue line remains below the red line, then that stock or ETF is on a sell signal. Okay, so we first we determine the price trend, and if the stock is on a buy signal, we're going to buy a call option, and what we like to do is select a low risk entry point, and we use the uh, Keltner channels uh, to select our entry point. Uh, they're similar to the Bollinger Bands. Um, I found for our purposes that the Keltner channels are a little more accurate, so we, we prefer using the uh, Keltner channels. And here's an example of the Keltner channels. They're an overbought, oversold indicator. This is a daily price movement for Home Depot stock, the red and black vertical lines here. And then there's three Keltner channels. There's the upper channel uh, right here, and the middle channel is uh, the, the, this dotted line right here. And then, of course, we have the uh, lower channel. And the channels act as an overbought, oversold indicator. And you can see when the stock is trading near the upper channel, then it's getting overbought. When it's trading near the lower channel, it's getting oversold. So we like to use these channels to uh, time our entry. And here's an example of, uh, this, this again is the daily price movement of Home Depot stock. So um, what I did is I circled the price movement when it got up or above that upper channel. Um, I circled that. So obviously you don't want to buy when it's trading up near that upper channel or above the, 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 the upper channel. You want to wait for a retracement to the middle channel, which is the, the dotted line, or the uh, lower channel. So we will wait and time our entry. And you can see uh, Home Depot stock here got overbought because it was near the upper channel. And of course, once it gets overbought, then the odds are it's going to retrace. So we can see overbought. Uh, retraced, then it became oversold, and it rallied. Um, got up near the uh, upper channel again, overbought. Um, it retraced towards the middle channel. Um, overbought, retrace. Overbought, retrace. Overbought, retrace. Overbought, retrace. So 
uh, we'll, we'll wait for a pullback. Uh, we'll watch a stock and uh, wait till it pulls back in, in, to this middle or lower channel. So let's let's look at an example, and uh, in the, in these examples, notice how the uh, stock rallied after we purchased the call, uh, producing a profitable trade. And um, so we we use these uh, Keltner channels to enter a trade. Here here's an example for Amazon, and uh, this is the daily price movement of Amazon right here. And what we're showing, this is our, our brokerage account transaction uh, symbol, uh, trans transaction history for uh, an Amazon call option purchase we made. We bought two of the Amazon um, 330 strike calls at 113, and that was right in here. So you can see Amazon's been on a very uh, strong price uptrend, and generally will retrace towards the middle channel and then resume the rally again. So we were, we were following this and then we waited until it, it got right in here in the, uh, when, when it retraced to the middle channel and we bought the 330 strike call at 113 and then uh, the stock rallied after our entry. So we got a good entry um, on that trade using the uh, Keltner channels. Now this option has since expired but we roll over our expiring options if the stock is still on a buy signal. So we still own Amazon uh, call options. It's rallied quite a bit since this initial uh, position that we took in Amazon. So we use the uh, Keltner channels to look for low risk entries. Here's a, another example. This is for Starbucks. And you can see when we took this snapshot that Starbucks was in a strong price uptrend um, and it, when it got overbought it, it normally retraced to the middle channel so we were following this and then right in here uh, we pulled the trigger uh, when it retraced to the middle channel we bought 14 of the Starbucks 40 strike calls at 13.75 so this is just another example of timing the entry and then this trade worked out because the stock continued to rally uh, after we purchased the uh, call options. And when you do this, if you can get a low risk entry, then uh, that helps you prevent being stopped out of the uh, trade and results in higher um, accuracy trading. And once we uh, decide that we're going to purchase a call option, uh, we use what we call the 1% rule to select the option strike price. And um, once you decide you're going you're to buy a call option, uh, we normally trade fairly liquid stocks or ETFs. So um, once we decide we're going to buy a call option on a stock or an ETF, uh, there could be hundreds or even thousands of strike prices to choose from. So selecting the strike price is just as important as the trade selection itself. So uh, option premiums uh, consist of time value and intrinsic value and options lose all of their time value at option expiration. So whenever you buy an option you're buying a decaying asset so um, you want to you want to keep that in mind and each day an option is going to lose um, some time value and then of course, when you get to expiration, it loses all time value. So we keep that in mind. And uh, due to these time decay characteristics of options, when you buy an option, you want to minimize that time value because that's going to decay to zero. And you want to maximize the uh, intrinsic value. <clears throat> so if you, what we do is we'll limit the time value portion of that option to less than 1% of the strike price. Uh, and if you do that, then you'll minimize the time value, which decays to zero, and you'll maximize the intrinsic value. So for, as an example, um, if you purchase an option on a stock that's trading at 100, you want to limit the time value portion of that option to one point or less. That would be 1% of uh, a 
uh, stock trading at 100. So if you're buying uh, a call option on a stock trading at 100, you want to limit that time value portion of the option to one point or less, which would be 1% of the uh, stock price. So if you limit that time value to 1% of the stock price, the stock only has to go up 1% in order for the trade to break even and for you to start making money. So um, this will have a much higher probability of success than a strike price that required the uh, option or required the underlying stock to go up, let's say, 6 or 10% in order to break even. So the stock only has to go one up 1% 1 and we start making money. So that obviously is going to be much higher probability of success than uh, a strike price that requires the underlying stock to go up 6 or maybe 10% in price just to break even. And a lot of times the underlying stock, it won't make that expected price move. It perhaps go up 10% before option expiration or you're going to lose 100% of your uh, option premium, a lot of times it won't make that, that move and you'll, you'll lose 100% of your um, uh, option premium. So we um, um, use this 1% rule and uh, that deleverages options a little bit um, and your uh, percentage um, profit potential is less with an in the money call than it is for an at the money or out of the money call, but it's a trade off. You, you have a higher probability of, of uh, a win on your option trade. So let's let's look at an ex actual example. This our transaction history shows that we bought the DVY. That's the uh, dividend ETF. We bought the uh, September uh, 70 call at 11.70. And at the time, DVY was trading at 81.38. So we bought the 70 strike call, the stock trading at 81. So that was an in the money um, call option. And let's look at the math on this and how you can calculate this time value portion of the option. So um, the stock was trading at 81.38. We bought the 70 strike call and so the intrinsic value of this option, we paid 1170 for the option. So the intrinsic value is calculated by simply subtracting the strike price from the stock price. So we hit this option that we paid 1170 for had an intrinsic value of 1138. And then you take the total premium in this example, 1170, you subtract the intrinsic value from that, and you can see that this option had a time value of 32 cents. And um, what that means is um, the DVY ETF only had to go up 32 cents and this trade would break even and start making money. And we have a series of option calculators for all of our option strategies and what these do is they calculate the profit potential for the option assuming various price changes in the underlying stock at option expiration. In this example, from a 30% increase in the stock to a 5% decrease in the stock at option expiration. So these will uh, calculate the uh, profit potential with these various assumptions. So um, here's the um, analysis for the call option purchase. Uh, DVY ETF was trading at 81.38. We bought the 70 strike call at 1170. So we can see that if the stock is flat at 8138 at option expiration, we only lose 2.7% on the option. Uh, that's a lot better than losing 100%. So if we bought an at the money or out of the money call and the stock didn't trade above the strike price at option expiration, then we would we would show 100% loss here at expiration. So, and we can see that uh, if the DBY was up 10% at expiration, this trade would put uh, uh, profit 66 and uh, yeah 66% with a 10% move in the underlying stock. 20% move in the underlying stock would be 136% uh, return. 
So uh, even though we deleverage de the option a little bit by selecting um, an in-the-money strike price, these are still good returns uh, if the um, underlying stock goes up in price, these are good returns for um, this option trade. So again, um, with only 32 cents of time value in this example, uh, the DBY ETF only has to increase 32 cents, and that's four tenths of 1%, and then this trade breaks even and we start profiting on it. And again, when you use this 1% rule, um, uh, that it'll be a much higher uh, uh, success rate than um, buying at the money or out of the money calls that require uh, a 10, maybe even 15% move in the underlying stock just to break even. A lot of the times that's not going to happen and you're going to lose 100% of your option premium. Um, okay, so once we select the uh, the directional option trade, then we have uh, three trade management rules. Uh, we exit our losing trades quickly before they turn into large losses, and we don't exit winning trades with a small gain. And I'll show you how uh, we, uh, we don't have to exit our winning, winning trades with a small gain because we'll create a spread. So, um, and then the third uh, rule is we use options to protect any profits uh, that we have on winning trades. So the trade management is just as important as the trade selection. Um, you want to exit a losing trade quickly and if the trade works out and you have a profit then you want to use options to uh, protect those profits. Uh, here's here's um, a snapshot of some recent uh, closed trades that we took <clears throat> and this this column right here lists the uh, profit we had for the trade, the profit or loss that we had for the trade, and uh, here's here's the second part of that snapshot. So um, this this column right here, this uh, the column on the left, of course, has the uh, the stock, the strike price, um, what we uh, opened the transaction at, in this case we bought the LNG uh, 40 strike call at 1260, we closed it out at 2410, we had a uh, $6,882 profit on this. So what I did was um, I tallied up the losing trades in those in those closed out trades and compared them to the winning trades and uh, to demonstrate that you don't want to uh, exit uh, or you, you you want to exit losing trades quickly before they turn into large losses. So, in these in these examples, in in these two snapshots here, our average losing trade was 14%. So we'll look to get out of an option trade um, if we get up near a 20% loss. We'll we'll exit. Uh, we were wrong, and we will simply exit before it develops into a large loss. And um, in, th in this example, um, we, we, we exited and the average loss was a 14% loss. So by not exiting um, uh, winning trades with a small gain, um, we had an average winning trade in this example of 136%. So we had an average losing trade of 14% um, and we had an average winning trade at 136%. So um, that's why you don't want to exit your winning trade with a small gain because uh, the winning trades can uh, uh, mitigate your losing trades and for example, we only had to win on one out of every eight trades in order for the portfolio to profit. So this is an example of why uh, we don't exit with a small profit because we want to hold on to the option and uh, get a, a, a big winning trade and if you do that then you don't have to win on that many trades in order for your portfolio to profit. So we exit quickly with losing trades and hold on to winning trades. And of course if you incur a 20% loss on your option trade 
uh, it takes a 25% return on the next trade to break even. Uh, if you incur a 50% loss, then your next trade you have to have a 100% win <laughs> in order to break even. So how many 100% wins have you had lately? So um, we always exit uh, losing trades quickly, 20% um, or less, and then hold on to the uh, winning trades. And here's an example. Um, this is um, some. Uh, th this is a snapshot of open trade profits. Uh, we have two accounts. Uh, this is uh, my larger uh, retirement account. And this column lists the uh, the option that we uh, bought, the uh, quantity, the the price we paid, uh, the uh, last price, and then our dollar profit and percent gain. So this is just an open open trade snapshot. Uh, this um, retirement account had a $961,000 open trade profit using Prime Trade Select, and my smaller uh, retirement account had a $247,000 uh, open trade profit. So those trades were uh, selected using Prime Trade Select.